You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Kurt Rodriguez, the sole mind behind the project that is called Cirque du Masque. Kurt Rodriguez, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit, sir. Oh, th- thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> so I obviously uh, discovered you on Instagram just shortly ago, and I've been digging into this genre. I don't even know really what to call it, uh, but before we get into like the nitty-gritty of what Cirque du Mask is, I need to get more of a background on yourself. So what is your superhero origin story? Take me back. How do you remember finding your passion for music? Uh, it's, it's, it's not all too interesting, but, um, so back then I grew up on stuff like glam metal, like, you know, like Bon Jovi, Poison, yeah. Def Leppard. That, that's what my, that's what my, uh, mom brought me up on. So I was already kind of into, into that kind of metal headspace back then. I would say, um, the thing that really got me into music in the beginning of all things was guitar hero. <laughs> and I think Which that's is, an introduction that, that the people shouldn't be ashamed of anymore. <laughs> that's that's it, totally fine. No, yeah. Like it, I, I, I just loved it because it introduced me to just so many things. It's like, you know, guitar hero, it's, it's not just metal guitar. It's not just metal songs or anything. It's all different kinds of songs and a respect for all different genres. So, um, so <laughs> I remember, uh, new year's Eve parties, back then just uh uh, my cousin nick he uh he had the game and you know we would play it on like new year's eve parties and uh, just have a blast with it and then i finally got guitar hero 2 on my own playstation 2 um and it wasn't until uh guitar hero 3 so that's like 2007 that's usually how long that's how i remember how many years i've played guitar because it was guitar hero 3 and I think 2007, that's when I really got the love for like just the guitar as an instrument. I was like, you know what? This is really cool. I think I could try this out. I got, I was decent at Guitar Hero. Uh, I, I played on Expert and I, I, I did okay. Like, but I think being introduced to all those different ways that the guitar can be played and all that stuff really was like, oh, this is really cool. And there's just so much you can do with this instrument. So it was in 2007. My mom goes and gets me a $250 BC Rich Bronze Warlock. And you know, all the, all the, the, the boss pedals, you remember those? Like the, what is it? Oh yeah. What are they called? Like the death metal pedal and <laughs> all those <laughs> things. And like just a, a crappy uh, hand-me-down amp. And I, yeah, I was a complete nuisance for a while. <laughs> just trying just... to learn how to play the instrument. <laughs> so that was your first guitar was a BC Rich? Yes. Oh man! So there was just no chance of you not becoming a metalhead. <laughs> oh yeah, I know it was, it was kind of destined to be at that point. <laughs> and I mean, like even like you know, even when I was like testing the waters with like metal stuff, like back then, too. My favorite song back then was "Bring Me to Life" by Evanescence, of all things. <laughs> but, but like I was like, oh, this is this is cool. This is this is heavier than than you know other stuff that I've listened to. I didn't even know Me- Metallica until Guitar Hero Three, like or. I never really listened to them like at that time. Uh, I was just like, I remember in the reviews for like the first two guitar heroes, the main complaint was, oh, well, you know, they have Megadeth. Why don't they have Metallica? And I was like, oh, Metallica. I, I keep hearing that name a lot. And then <laughs> they had and then they had one in Guitar Hero 3. And I was just like, oh, this is awesome. And they also had Slayer in that same that uh, that same game. So uh, I would say that growing up and once I got into guitar, once that started going, I just say the big four in general. So, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer and Anthrax were like some really big uh, influences for me to start playing. And it obviously got me to play to want to play fast to play like thrash metal type stuff as well. (laughs) But uh, you have a lot of other influences going on from playing the video game. You didn't just check out metal. You also checked out, weirder stuff (laughs) oh yeah definitely and it's like my influences like specifically with like Cirque du Masque they they go beyond like metal as well and I would say uh even just back then video game soundtracks like and I'm I'm talking even like like Zombies Ate My Neighbors on the Super Nintendo like that soundtrack (laughs) 
is like, you know, it's that creepy, interesting, just really kooky kind of vibe. You know, I loved uh, Super Mario 64, that soundtrack. Uh, of course, Ocarina of Time, that, that's an obvious one, was uh, uh, Koji Kondo, I think, was his, was his name, the composer for that. And uh, another one definitely was <laughs> Conker's Bad Fur Day. And <laughs> I, I, I find it funny because with Conker's Bad Fur Day, it's like, and with some soundtracks that they go to all different kinds of places too. And like, especially with Conker's Bad Fur Day for me, like they have the kooky, fun, upbeat, almost Banjo-Kazooie type of uh, music. I, I don't think it was the same composer that did both Banjo and Conker. I think that was a different guy, but uh, Robin Beanland, I think was his name, the composer for that. So he, you know, he does all that, that kooky stuff, but there's also different like genres. He does like a heist uh, there's like that heist part in the game and there's this funny uh, heist music um, when you're doing the, <laughs> when you're doing the, um, what was it? The surfing or like the lava boarding part. There's like this electronic that's just pumping music and it, it does so many different things. And I found that really interesting to me. It was just like within the span of one game that you had all these, you're mixing all these little different elements, different influences in there. That's a really good point because, on like, I thought when I was listening to your music, definitely soundtrack soundtracks would have been an influence on you. But I didn't really make the connection to video game soundtracks. But it's like with a movie, you kind of have to stay in a certain kind of feeling or atmosphere because this movie is kind of one expression, sort of in a way, and you can right. kind of go to different emotions and stuff. But with a video game, it's like, yeah, you can go into all these different, completely different places different genres of music and everything you can really expand out oh yeah and like i mean don't get me wrong to just uh movie composers and yeah i would i would say like movie composers probably danny elfman would would be like the biggest one for me right just a lot of a lot of in that in that video the the uh, the twisted colossus video um the tuba playing was definitely inspired by like some of the tuba parts in like uh, Bat the Batman theme. And, and da say. Danny Elfman has been releasing music over the past year or so that has been pretty out there and crazy too. Have you been Have you been keeping up with that? Oh yeah, I I, I listened to that full that full album that he dropped. I forgot when it dropped. It dropped maybe a, a month or or so ago. But no, yeah, definitely. Um, and I listened to that, and I, that was awesome. I thought it was funny that he also just kind of incorporated the the industrial stuff and a little bit of the you know the harder edge stuff as well as you know his usual kookiness into it. And I thought that was uh, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I actually saw it uh, shared up on uh, Reddit on the subreddit for prog metal, and people were saying if you like Devin Townsend, you're probably going to like this song. And I clicked on it, checked it out, and I was like, this is. Danny Elfman? <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> so uh, from playing the video games, that th then did you find like now you, then you started listening to more soundtracks or movies or anything? Is there any other like uh, other than Danny Elfman? Is there any other music composers uh, from movies that you would talk about? Um, I think it was, I feel like it was mostly video game composers, I think, than, than movies. But I do, I, I, I couldn't tell you, like, uh, right off the bat, like, the names of some of the composers in, in, in movies and stuff like that. I just knew, I, I made a quick list, and I knew that, you know, Danny Elfman would be on there. I would, I would say, as far as just any composer goes, um, my favorite is probably Akira Yamaoka, the composer for Silent Hill is oh. definitely my i would say my hands down my favorite another shout out i would give would be and i hope i don't butcher this but um gustavo santalaya the composer for the last of us those two are really big influences for me and i would say akira was definitely a huge influence for the second soundtrack that i did because the second soundtrack that i did was way way different than the first one it does have some callbacks to the first soundtrack but it was a totally different just that kind of trip hop kind of vibe and stuff like that that i got a lot of uh influence from 
yeah so let, let's let's get into that now so like going from learning music learning the guitar to actually writing your own music what, what do you think you you wanted to do at the beginning maybe even before Cirque du Masque well I mean what what any you know teenager in in high school wants to do when they pick up a guitar they just want to you know they want to rock and you know and do all that stuff, play the, play the shows, do you, you know, all the debauchery with all that stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't remember exactly when I started writing music. It just felt like a very, it felt very fluid to me. It didn't, it didn't feel like there was a distinct part where I was like, okay, I'm not going to do covers and then, and write my music or, you know, go from covers to your original music. I, I don't think there was a huge, like defining point in that, but I did, uh, I did have some a couple other bands too. I had uh, a band with a friend in high school, and then that kind of that kind of teetered out. And then the big the big thing that I ended up doing was I was in the band Solithia for the, a couple years. I forgot how many years, but that's when I really kind of tried my hand at at writing music and stuff like that and that was that was like a kind of a metalcore vibe i would say was what that was because uh the guitarist brandon uh was he a huge trivium fan and he introduced me to trivium and i was like oh this is this is pretty cool and you know we kind of hit it off there and you know we had this uh the big four we love the big four and we were just sharing different kinds of metal between you know, us two and the rest of the members of the band. And I learned about all these different metal bands and how those metal bands were able to, you know, do things differently. And it's like, oh, well, this ain't thrash metal anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like the bands like like Cynic, Mastodon, right. Atheist, mm -hmm. Opeth, uh, the, those and uh, Behemoth. Uh, the, those were like some of the bands that are just like doing just this different thing. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And it's just even within metal, there's just so much you can do just with metal itself. Yeah. And so at what point did you kind of have the original uh, idea for Cirque du Masque? How did that come about? So uh, with Silithia, we played, like I said, a couple a couple of years. And that that kind of, you know, broke down or whatever. We're all, we're all still great friends. In fact, this, uh, this Friday, um, I'm going to see my drummer's band where he's the guitarist and the vocalist, uh, over motion, the band over motion. I'm going to go and see them this, this Friday, actually. It's gonna be really fun. Um, with, yeah, with, with Solithia, um, I, I was trying to do different. I, I was at that point when I was writing the music, I was like, Oh, what if I try this? What if I try that? You know, just started picking at things and you know i had my my at the time i had my really crappy daw my daw the it was mixcraft i still use mixcraft but but back then i had i don't know like mixcraft six or something like that and that's where i could record guitars and like just show ideas to the band but because i also had that that daw i was like oh look there's there's a i could put a piano in there if i wanted or you know whatever and i started picking at that stuff, like with different, like different synthesizers, different, just a different headspace. And when Silithia ultimately, uh, when that ended, um, was, I was like, Oh, well, I, I, I would really like to, I would want to try this, like try something, you know, different and really get out there. And, uh, but yeah, that's around the time that, uh, I started recording the first soundtrack, which again, going back to the, the video game, soundtrack stuff that it was very inspired by that by that the old school stuff like i said like zombies ate my neighbors uh super mario uh conquers bad fur day stuff like that that kind of whimsical music i, I thought it'd, it'd be interesting to kind of mix a little bit of that whimsy with metal and like i did a little bit of that in the first soundtrack there's a couple tracks that what well one of them is like straight up like this this pipe organ and it's just this heavy double bass and i thought it would be interesting to be like hey well what if i mix metal with just compositions in general like just little tidbits here and there you know and that's when i really started messing around with it and it it was pretty interesting to to try out i wanted i just wanted to i wanted to try something different it's always you know always interesting to try something different so i had a lot of fun with that first soundtrack 
and doing all the little themes and stuff like that. And it was a fun, fun time, definitely. It was a time of experimentation and just kind of seeing like what will work and that kind of exactly. a thing. Exactly. And I, I'd say another big one that really opened my eyes, if, not just for composing, but just metal in general was Igor. And that's how, that's how I met you because you, right. you're, uh, you're following Igor on Instagram. I was like, Hey, you like this band? Maybe you'll, you'll dig my stuff. And Igor just, it's just ridiculous. I, I love Igor and just the different things that he does. It's like, Hey, you know what? Let's do like an accordion and then just have blast beats underneath it. Okay. Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like throw, throw ideas at the wall and whatever sticks. I mean, it, it, it's still art because they're taking time to figure out how it's going to work together. It's not like just random shit thrown together. Right. But, exactly. uh, I, I, I have a hard time like you do probably finding people that like this type of music. And I often have a hard time even describing it to people. Cause I, I, I know that I like progressive metal, but this isn't progressive metal that most people would think of, you know, like as right. fitting under that umbrella, they would be like, no, this is like avant garde something. I don't know. How right. do you usually like to describe Cirque de Mask? I I wouldn't call I feel like if I called it avant garde that's just way too that's too like snooty for a musician himself to, yeah exactly they're just like oh yeah you know I'm avant garde you wouldn't know I'm arty I, <laughs> yeah um I I don't know what I would call it I don't really I don't really think of a label for it honestly I just kind of do what you know just feels right to me, which is why, like I said, the first soundtrack, the difference between the first soundtrack and the second soundtrack are very different, but it's, you know, I, to me, it was just interesting. And it's like, when I was finished with the first soundtrack, I was like, okay, I did, you know, I did the whimsy stuff. I did the video game stuff. Um, and then, you know, that's when I figured, uh, found out about Akira Yamaoka and I was like, this stuff is awesome. I love this kind of trip hop kind of stuff. Uh, and then by the end of while I was completing the last or the first soundtrack, I started composing for the second one. And it just, it just kept going and going. And I just was on this, I don't know, like two year run of going, switching from one soundtrack to the next, because I think the thing that I love about composers is like you said, the, the movie is, is the, the singular vision. And like, you know, this is like the same thing with like yeah. the soundtrack, the soundtrack, the, you know, stuff like that. But at the same time, those composers do all different kinds of movies. It's not just, it's yeah. not just one. You're not like Danny Elfman doesn't just do this whimsy kind of, he, he doesn't go from, you know, he does like nightmare before Christmas and then somewhere down the line, he does Spider-Man and they're yeah. like, you know, he, he still, and he, but he still retains those kind of, those, those elements in there. And that, and with the second soundtrack, I tried to do that as well, that there's, there's still callbacks to the first soundtrack and, you know, stuff like that. And moving forward, I'll, I'll still like, you know, make references to my old material because, you know, it's just, it's just how I write music and stuff like that. So. So it's like a, a continuous story kind of a thing. It's like, it's all attached to itself. Right. Yeah. I like it. And, but it's also like giving yourself a boundless, like you can go anywhere you want and it'll still be attached to it. Like anywhere on the map that you want to go. That's, exactly. the, that's the really neat thing about it, I find. And uh, so doing the videos, how does this coming about? Are you making the videos? Like it's got such a cool style to all of them. Uh, yes. I have been making videos since middle school with uh, my friend Kenny. And I use, uh, we've, we've been doing, you know, sketches and dumb stuff for a while and, and all that stuff. But um, I, found, I found those videos were just, really fun to make in general. And I think that's where my love of filmmaking type stuff, you know, uh, being an editor, video editor and stuff like that was really interesting to me. It was, it was really fun. It just, I, I just loved any creative outlet I could get my hands on, you know, so music and video and then, you know, go figure. I was like, Oh, well, you know, I've had, I've had my experience with video making. Why don't I, you know, combine that with the, the Cirque du Mask stuff and make just this really interesting, you know, audio visual type thing going on. And uh, those playthrough videos or like the one that you saw um, was the first time that I like had, you know, 
live musicians, human beings on it. Because if you look at the, the other stuff, um, it's all drawn and animated. I don't do that stuff though. Uh, oh. I have, I have an, I have an, uh, art, artiste, uh, named, uh, <laughs> Lana Liz and she is amazing. She is an amazing artist. So we've been, cl- we've been collaborating for ages, but, um, she does all the, all the drawings and all that stuff. And it looks amazing. I absolutely love her work. I advise anyone who's into that kind of, you know, macabre style, uh, American McGee's Alice type stuff. Definitely check out her work, but she, she does the artwork and I've had, I've had a, kind of some rotating, uh, animators. Cause like I do all, I, I found all these people, including the session musicians on Fiverr on that right. website. Mm-hmm. So that's how I found Lana. And, you know, I, I found, uh, some animators. I've had a couple, um, and that's what they that's what I started off with with that first soundtrack. I was like, okay, so I have the music and it definitely has its own like style thing. And I was like, oh well, I gotta have some visuals with it too. So I had her draw up some stuff. I did a couple videos um that had that just had the work the artwork animated and you know, just a little audio visual thing. I mean, it's not really a music video, but I call it an audio visualizer because you know. It's just one animated piece, but you know, I do the zoom ins and you know, change angles and stuff like that to make it look all interesting and stuff like that. But um, so yeah, she has done the artwork, and then for that, uh, the playthroughs, uh, the framing of it, the frame, the, the little circus framing, the the masks and the the steampunk stuff and all that stuff, she drew that as well. So. And then that was animated. I, I wanted to have that to just give it a little bit more style to it. And then um, because these playthroughs were the first time I was going to have actual, you know, human players on screen. I was right. like, well, I mean, what if I like just slightly make them a little animated? Like I, I had this one little I, I forgot what plugin it is, but it's it's a kind of a cartoonizer kind of thing. Um, so I, I put that on there to kind of even it out going from, you know, the straight hand drawn stuff to, you know, now you have actual live musicians. So, and that's why I had like, you know, the frame in there as well. And the little, uh, in the background, the like hypnotic circle thing moving around the entire time. Uh, so it's, it's to keep it somewhat consistent with the stuff before it. And so making videos seems to be just as much a, a part of the passion for the, the art making process as it is for making the music. Oh yes, definitely. Um, I'm all about just all different avenues. There's artwork, videos, all that stuff. I mean, if I if I had a live show, <laughs> there would and like there would be so much to it. There would be projections. There would you know and the the artwork. I would totally have this artwork you know uh, for sale and all that stuff. I would totally talk to uh, Lana about it and be like you know your stuff is amazing that would totally be cool like it's like that's just something that could be a poster or something like that you know um, <laughs> but it, it's it's a multi it, it, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, a lot of different aspects that go into it and i would totally have like uh, uh set designs too i would totally do that and like i i know people that that help me with that stuff because you know it, everything that I've done really has kind of reverted back to this project. And that even includes uh, me working as a stage technician at the Harris center. So that was, that's been my job for a long time and just learning how all that stuff works. And that's a whole other realm too, but it's like, you know, I do all these things the the, the video making and the music just kind of came hand in hand. I was like, Oh, well, you know what? I make videos. So why not just kind of, you know, marry these two together. But you know, if I had like a live show as well, I would bring in that knowledge as being a stage technician and, and seeing how all that behind the scenes stuff works, how set design works, because, you know, I, I took stagecraft classes in college, so I built sets and stuff like that. And, you know, if I had my way, I'd be like, oh, well, I'd totally go and uh, build a set for like a cert performance. So it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's it's a whole circus. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like you're the ringmaster of this whole like uh, show that we're watching, and that's it's it's this kind of like going into your imagination further with each element that gets put on top of it. So for you right now, 
what's on the horizon for you? What what are you working on right now? Um, I now am working on another, or I'm doing an EP, not not a soundtrack yet. The third the third soundtrack will be somewhere down the line. I wanted to do a couple EPs that um, were more song driven, like you know, like an actual song, not just a composition, but um, more song driven. Um, for this next EP, uh, it's going to be more like actually this song, the the Twisted Colossus song. It's that it's going to be, you know, go kind of go back to metal because I mean, for people that don't know, like the the last two soundtracks, they're they're not really that metal. There's there's some elements in there, and that song, the Twisted Colossus song, um, was like the one like true like metal track on that on that second soundtrack that like it, everything just kind of built up to it. It's like that song is supposed to be like the climax of, of the story and stuff like that. So, um, and that, that second soundtrack also got me to experiment with having vocalists and all that stuff. And, you know, just doing all that stuff was, you know, really interesting. Again, just switching things up. It, it, it had been a while since I had like really composed like song songs so you like going back to that and still just like trying to keep it interesting for myself and uh, all the all the talented session musicians I've worked with. Um, I could name them all, if you, you know, like, <laughs> uh, especially even if for, for this video too. just um, Maria Cosma from the band Amity Trap on bass, uh, Josh Clark, the drummer of All That Is Flesh. Uh, I hope I don't butcher this. Uh, Mateusz Sibyla was the vocalist. Um, it, that was different than on the actual um, the soundtrack track because that was originally performed by Thomas Blanc, who also wrote the lyrics for that. But no, Ma- Mateusz, he was he was awesome, I, and he really delivered uh, on that playthrough. Um, Alberto Azzolini was the the tuba player, and so it's always interesting trying to get like stuff like that, like a tuba or yeah. uh, like Andre Olton was uh, on the accordion and, you know, just trying to be like, Hey, so I'm kind of doing a metal, you know, <laughs> track. Yeah. Would you want to do tuba? <laughs> and, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, and you know, they're, they've all been enthusiastic about it. Like um, especially uh, Fabian, I think Fabian or Fabian, Fabian Hernandez, the saxophonist for the, uh, this song. Um, he was all into it. I, I told him, Hey, uh, do you like a torture garden by John Zorn or like naked city type type thing? And he was, he was all into it. I didn't have to say anything else. And he ripped it. And, uh, Alex Kosov, uh, Kosov, um, on trombone. And they, they all did really, really good. They're exceptional musicians. And it must have been so tempting, I mean, with all the, the time to try to find the musicians to record it and everything like that. So many people were just went, dude, just like get a get a sample library, right? But to <laughs> actually take the time, like, no, I want a human being to play this. That's oh, yeah, exactly. props to you for, for taking the time and the effort to make that all real instruments. It just adds to the fullness of the sound. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And that uh, also got to give props to Black Oil Recordings because they were the ones who did the mixing and mastering for this. I had to do the the mixing and the mastering for the the or not the mastering, but the mixing for the first two soundtracks because it's just you know I wanted to make this stuff and I didn't want to feel like there was boundaries and you know sound sound engineers can be a little pricey sometimes, but. Um, I figured I'd, I'd try it. I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll try to mix. Can't can't really say I'm the best mixer, but, you know, I, I did what I did. And, you know, I'm, I'm still proud of those two soundtracks. But um, I knew going in with uh, this playthrough, I was like, I, especially just for metal in general, I was like, I, I need some help. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to mix this one. I'm going to I'm going to give it off to a real professional to, to go and kind of figure this out. So. Definitely props to Black Oil Recordings for taking on this this pretty grieving task. <laughs> uh, I, I got to ask, so now, is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, 
Oh, I don't know. Just, you know, the, the typical, you know, follow your dreams. Don't let, <laughs> don't let anything get in your way, you know, just, just do it. Don't, don't be afraid of, of, I would say labels or genres, just do whatever you want, whatever sounds just fun to you. I mean, go and look at some of these bands like Igor, or Mr. Bungle, they're just doing whatever they want to do and do whatever you want to do. Like, just have fun with it. I think we need to, yeah, sometimes metal can be a little too serious. <laughs> that it's like yeah. you know why not put an accordion or a tuba in there why not just have fun with it just do something you know just weird who ca- who cares like it's it's you know it's music you've got to have fun with it right absolutely I, I think that's how we keep progressing exactly <laughs> great that reminds me wasn't there like a, a frank zappa quote oh my god i don't remember without Without deviation, progress is not possible. Was it? Is that a ah, quote from him? I think? I think. Yeah, deviation might have been the word. Uh, he also talked about um, dissidents. I think was another. He talked about that. Uh, the people on the periphery. He, he talked about a lot being even if they're wrong, they're progressing us uh-huh, by by right. being on the periphery and by being a dissident kind of a thing. Uh, I'll, I'll have to ask Stanley though. His nephew, Stanley, actually, he has a show on our station. Oh, nice. But as he likes to say, he calls it uh, feeding the algorithm. And, you know, <laughs> why not feed the algorithm with something that you actually, you know, want to see art progress? Why, why just do the same thing that we all know is going to work? Try something new. Experiment. It might be messy. You might fail. You might do it wrong. But at least you will have something new and you'll have learned something. Oh yeah, definitely. I I think it's doing doing this kind of music to me is just is it's fun. Like there's no there's no other way to put it to me. Like it's just fun, and it's like well, I, I want to have fun. <laughs> I have one life to live. Might as well just go and just do what I want. Like make the most out of it. And there must be a, a process of discovery is a part of it too. Like figuring out what works and discovering something new by by my making a mistake somewhere or something oh yeah like i'd say even with that like one of my favorite things that i did with the last soundtrack was finding not ju- not just finding session musicians because the, the second soundtrack was the first one that i had that i had brought in people to to do some stuff um but one of the f- most fun things i did and one of the things that i sought out right when i had started the second soundtrack was i didn't want guitar solos I want, okay. if, if there was going to be any solo in the song, um, it was going to be just, it was going to be something else, like something new, just try, you know, they would, it was just a lot of experimenting and it was a lot of fun kind of listening to these songs and being like, okay, what, what could be a cool thing? Would it, would a clarinet work here? Would, would this or something like that? But definitely with this, the Twisted Colossus track, I was like, this needs saxophone. Saxophone can be so fun to do over like metal stuff and, that's yeah. de- that's definitely what I got from that uh that John Zorn album Torture Garden. I mean, it's just like it's kind of grindcore, but kind of not. <laughs> it's, it's just like, what is this? This is this is weird, but this is awesome. <laughs> uh, we're getting towards the end here, Kurt. Uh, for everybody to find you online, where's the easiest people to find Cirque de Mask? I'd say Instagram, just Instagram.com slash Cirque du Mask. Uh, C-I-R-Q-U-E-D-U mask. Awesome. You've been listening to The Peach Pit, everybody. I've been talking with Kurt Rodriguez from the band Cirque du Mask. Make sure you go check him out and you'll be blown away. Kurt, thanks for taking time to talk to me and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Oh yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me.